This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. On May 15, 2021, I became the first person ever to eat ice cream that was actually churned and frozen at the edge of space. And the team that made it happen was a group of strangers from the internet. Six months ago, someone in my Discord suggested making ice cream with the super cold temperatures in Earth's stratosphere. And in no time at all, the WISE task force was on the case. We knew that the atmosphere would be cold enough to freeze it and that we could get there with a weather balloon. But while sending ice cream to space would be easy, Making ice cream there is a lot more challenging. Most balloon launches you'll see on YouTube focus on a static, lightweight payload, like a crown or a sneaker or a piece of garlic bread. These things are all relatively light, so you don't need a very big balloon to launch them, and they don't need to move or change at all over the course of their time aloft. The only real issues relate to the balloon rig itself. Keeping everything simple means it's relatively cheap to do, and you're more than likely to succeed. By contrast, freezing ice cream requires more than just sub-zero temperatures. In order to get that soft, creamy texture, you have to keep the ice crystals small during the freezing process, which means you have to be constantly churning the mix. Without that agitation, you won't wind up with ice cream. Instead, you'll just have a big, milky rock. If we want to make ice cream on the edge of space, we're basically going to have to send up an entire ice cream mixer, complete with multiple power sources and a bunch of moving parts. Having so many active components means there are way more potential points of failure. So before we can even consider sending anything to the stratosphere, Every piece of flight hardware needs to be independently prototyped and tested here on Earth, at both standard temperature and pressure, and in artificial environments that simulate the sub-zero temperatures and the ultra-low pressure of the upper atmosphere. In addition, creating a frozen confection means that our payload is temperature sensitive. Based on an approximate two hour flight duration and 30 minute descent, even our most generous estimates gave us 45 minutes max before our ice cream would melt. Without any experience, I knew I couldn't do this alone, so I asked repeated failure to help lead our team for Project Stratos, the first official mission of the WTF. So the only untested in actual high altitude balloon things that we're even flying is the ice cream maker. Everything else, somebody else has done before. Undeterred by the challenges ahead, the task force members in our Discord began prototyping flight systems in late March, with many providing input for the design and repeated taking the lead on physically prototyping, testing, and integrating the ice cream maker into a flight-capable rig. To optimize our exact launch time and boost our odds of success, meteorologist Grace Dierig held a weather briefing the Wednesday before our launch. So here is our forecast for Saturday. So green is obviously rain. The ice cream cone here is our launch site. So this is Lima. Something else to note is that we don't have nearly as many cloud layers to go through. So that's going to be very helpful as well with our balloon because if there's precipitation, it has the potential to pop the balloon. While we couldn't put everything together until the day before the launch, we did as much as we possibly could to help integration go smoothly. Our finished unit was expected to have a mass of approximately 3 kilograms, meaning we'd need a truly gargantuan balloon to get this thing off the ground. So, in addition to repeated Grace and myself, we recruited Chris, Phil, and Clara to help out in real life with final assembly, launch, and recovery of our rig. Before the team arrived, I picked up a large size helium tank to fill the balloon and prepared the workshop for our final assembly. Most of the custom components were prefabricated by repeated failure, but they couldn't be fully integrated until we were together in Columbus, which meant we only had 24 hours to do it. So what's the plan? What are we doing? No plan. There is no plan. While Repeated and I worked on finalizing the ice cream mixer and mount, Chris and Phil wrapped the entire box in orange high-vis tape, and Clara worked on the electronics, testing the flight termination unit, and setting up the track we know that we borrowed from 1M. Is it this? The tiny little trace right there. Yeah, that might connect. You I think just, that's it? I just reflow that. Wait, that doesn't matter anyway. I'm an idiot. Those are connected. I just spent... <sighs> anyway, this should be fine now. No short. Thing. Yes. I mean, heck yes. <laughs> yeah. Integration wasn't easy, but by around 2 a.m. we managed to finish the build, and we left Repeated and Clara to stay an extra half hour just to double check our work and make sure the electronics were operating as intended. Or at least that's what we thought. Turns out they stayed the entire night. So we just got here. We have failure of a legend. What the heck? The rig was complete, but even after triple checking everything, we still had a problem. Chris and Phil were like nowhere to be found. It's about 9 a.m. right now, which is fine. However, the original plan was to be at the filming location by 9 a.m., by at the launch site. You know, Repeated was up super late last night getting all of this sorted out. There were a couple loose pieces and everything's together. However, we're missing the chase team. If we have to launch this thing with four people, it's gonna be super dicey. So hopefully we can pull this off. Just as we're rolling out of the parking lot, I get a call from them. Are you guys are you guys good? Yeah. No, 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 don't, don't come to the foundry. Just go directly launch site. See you there? See you in there. 
The chase team was back in action, but we were already almost two hours behind schedule and we needed to get to the launch site ASAP to get this thing in the air. Chase team pulls up. This man was using a map of Indiana to get here. What? I think this is gonna work. I think this will work. Finally ready to fill this thing with ice cream. So it's ice cream mix. The goal is it will be solid ice cream by the time it comes back down. I believe that's capacity. I think that's good. That's probably too much even for that mic maker. I'd pour about half of that out. That's about a cup. There we right go. Right here? Yep, that's good. So with that much ice cream, it's going in. That's about halfway filled in that middle little container. So now, put this on top. We need to get that back one at the same time as this one so we don't like crush the thing. Yep. Let's can, go. We should be able to just. Oh, wait. Yep. And then we'll tape this guy in on top so that he doesn't go anywhere. Okay. And that is your. And this actually kind of, I feel like, enhances the seal a little bit. So I? we're going to flex these out, and you're going to go up above it and then push down once it's back okay. there. As close to the bottom as you can get, it's good. As if we didn't already have enough moving pieces, we were also streaming the entire thing live on YouTube. Hello, everybody on stream. I can't see any of the chat, but I know it exists. Flight Director Sky ran pre-flight systems checks with our ground crew to confirm everything was turned on and functioning properly before launch, as even a single malfunctioning component could be the demise of the entire mission. We are live. We are in business. Like confirmed communication systems are on and transmitting. Communication systems go. Internal GPS lock. GPS lock go. So basically, we have this camera hooked up to a battery bank. Camera is on. Terrible right now, but the camera is going. So we're getting a little bit of wind pickup. There's con some convection, heating happening on the ground, and we're getting some clouds setting up on the horizon. Don't really like how that looks. It means our upper atmosphere is becoming a little bit more unstable. That's about as fast as I go. Okay. That's just the balloon weight. The That's balloon itself weighs 1.2 kilos. Correct. Holy cow. I don't know if Phil was laughing at what I said or if he's laughing at something else. We are at 2.4, 2.3, 2.4. Uh, is your camera running on this thing? Yes, yes. we started it, it about has been. half an hour ago. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of real boring footage. And That's now some, some good one. stuff. With everything ready, we were good to launch. We're go. We're go. Slowly lift it we up. We are go. Does okay. it feel buoyant? It does. Okay, let it go. Don't get smacked like that. Payload is away. Yeah. We're away. <laughs> yeah, so as it turns out, apparently when the box tipped over, it turned off the camera. Talk about bad design. But fortunately for you, every one of these launches looks exactly the same. Stream Chat named the balloon Chad, and as we watched Chad float up through the clouds, the chase team was already on their way, headed directly toward the predicted landing site. The rest of us followed closely behind, tracking Chad's location and altitude in real time, while also broadcasting live video to the stream through Discord. At this point, the rig was completely out of our hands. All we could do was drive, hope everything was functional, and wait for the balloon to pop. Oh, it's falling. Oh, we're going down. Okay, so we seem to be right. heading into some woods. So what's happening right now is we've discovered that the balloon is actually deviating pretty significantly from the original flight path. Um, and so right now in the Discord, we are remapping a predicted landing location. We have no idea where it's gonna land. Uh, so Sky is working on that, and we're communicating with the chase team to defeat a failure's car. Do we have an estimated time to touch down? Less than five minutes. We're dropping 4,000 feet in four minutes, and we're at 11,000. Update from spot, update from spot. As of 3.17.53 local time, it is headed towards the intersection of Bell Church and Purity Road. Okay, so we have confirmation that the box, the package, has landed on the ground. We are approximately 18 minutes away, 12 miles. Of course, this is where we really come into the time crunch, because this is a melting, this is a ticking time bomb. If we don't find this thing fast enough, it'll just melt. So we're like booking it on these backcountry roads uh, and hoping to just get there. What? <laughs> just the turn? <laughs> We gotta book it, we don't have time. <laughs> we arrive at a farm that the farmer is actively tilling. We have no idea whether this is trespassing or not. We're pretty sure it is, but we gotta get out there anyway. Ready? Yeah, I think we're ready, okay. It's like, it's gotta be like up ahead and to the right. Are we sure these are the exact GPS coordinates? Those are the last ones. Transmitted, crap. Uh, let's hope it's not in trees. Man's over here tilling the fields. Absolute unit he is. What do we say to Mr. Farmer, man? 
We're weather students from Denison University. Jason doesn't have a meteorology program. He doesn't know that. Okay, so to the left. Oh, come on. <gasps> Yo! No, Holy go. crap! <laughs> you can't Holy sh! The ice cream is here. Hold up. It appears that the uh, ice cream is still sealed, if a little bit destroyed. There's some frozen cream on the sides There's of the container. That's good. Here, wait, hold though. this. <laughs> All the <that> matters. <laughs> ice cream. It appears. Oh! Shut up! Yo! Look at this. That is ice cream made on the edge of space. Try it. It's delicious, too. It's Yo. really good. This is legit. Let's go. We have ice cream. I repeat, we have ice cream. <laughs> We're on our way. We have ice cream. And it's really freaking good. Some here, quick, before it melts. That's ice cream. Holy shit, that's ice cream. That's ice cream from space. Holy Where are they? I'm going to try my best to keep this cold. Ultimately, the mission was a success. We were able to eat solid ice cream from space. Yo! It's not probably solid at this point, but it is still chunky. Oh, Look. hell yeah. <laughs> we have ice that cream. That was just, ice cream. Just drink some of it, seriously, drink. seriously. Chug, 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 chug. As we watched repeated failure chug that delicious dairy dessert, we knew our work was done. As a team and as a community, we'd accomplished something we're pretty sure nobody's even attempted before, made possible by the combined passion of strangers on the internet. Stratospheric ice cream is one of the best desserts I've ever eaten, and a big part of what makes it so satisfying is that we made it ourselves, just like the meals from today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a meal kit service that delivers delicious, easy to make recipes right to your door. While space ice cream is pretty delicious, to be honest, it takes a super long time and a ton of planning to make. Unlike HelloFresh, whose simply delicious recipes are pre-planned just for you and can be prepared in about 30 minutes. And they really are delicious. There's a wide variety of recipes to choose from and the selection is always getting bigger and better. So you'll always be able to find something you like. Meals from HelloFresh are also sustainable. The ingredients are pre-portioned so there's no wasted food and the packaging they use is entirely recyclable or made from post-consumer fibers. I really wouldn't be recommending them if I didn't genuinely love what they offer. I remember trying it from someone else's promo for the first time in college, and I was blown away by the quality. If you haven't ever tried it, you're honestly missing out, and you can use code WISE12 for up to 12 free meals across your first four HelloFresh boxes, including free shipping on your first box using the link below. That's W-E-I-S-Z-12 for 12 free meals plus free shipping. Like, honestly, it's a really good deal, plus doing so supports the channel and makes these crazy videos possible. Now, if you're curious about the WISE Task Force, it's a group of highly skilled and passionate individuals who I can count on to help me make these projects happen. And even when they're not in the spotlight, WTF members have helped behind the scenes on all sorts of videos. If that sounds like the kind of thing you want to be part of, the first step to joining is to become a positive contributor in our community Discord, which I've linked below. Last but not least, thank you so much to my patrons for supporting the channel. On Patreon, you can find weekly updates behind the scenes for every video and direct access to me through our private Discord channel. See you next time. How many? I'm a little bit concerned. It works. Do you remember me asking you if we should check it one more time before flight? No. Uh, is your camera running on this thing? Yes, yes we started it about has been. half an hour ago.